Let's talk with someone who, well, credit to him, he's not afraid to put his money where his mouth is, but at times is this open to conflict? I speak of Dale Vince, who's the founder of Ecotricity, a major donor to both the Labour Party and to Just Stop Oil. Well, in October of last year, during the regular call Keir phone-in here, exclusively on LBC, Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer was asked by a caller, Fiona in Kendall, what he, Sir Keir, made of Just Stop Oil in those protests. I think they're wrong. I think their action is wrong. I think, you know, I particularly think about the images we've seen of ambulances coming down the road and not being able to get through because people have glued themselves to the road. Um, Fiona, my mum was very ill all of her life. Um, she was in those ambulances when she was alive, and there'll be other families listening to this who are in the same situation. And then to January of this year, another question, Cam in Nuneaton. Is it a conflict of interest for Sir Keir to take money from Dale Vince? Dale Vincent is, um, you know, look, he donated to the Labour Party. He knows me very well. He knows that um, nothing that he donates to the Labour Party is going to affect my judgment um, on this. Obviously, it's up to him what he does with his money, but uh, the fact he donates will not, the can will not make a blind bit of difference to the tough line that I take in relation to Just Stop Oil. And Sir Keir said at times Just Stop Oil can be arrogant. Let's bring Dale Vince into the conversation now. Thanks for coming on, Mr Vince. Have you got a conflict of interest here? Good morning to you. Yeah, morning, Nick. No, I don't think that I do, actually. Although, uh, you know, lots is made of this and potential conflicts and, and, and that kind of stuff. Let's say in the last week, at least, anyway, it's been a hot topic in UK media. Um, but I don't feel I have a conflict of interest. What of Sir Keir and his view that Just Stop Oil at times can be arrogant and indeed wrong? Those are his words, not mine, Dale. Yeah, I heard them. Um, I, I, I repeat your question, what of it? OK. Let's talk a little bit about last week. Uh, you offered to match over a 48-hour period whatever funding was raised for Just Stop Oil. You've now got to find £170,000, if my research is correct, to a total of £340,000. Why do you feel so committed to, to this, Dale? Well, I feel committed to the environment cause, Nick. Um, I've been concerned about it since, um, since the early 90s when I dropped back in. I was a traveller living on the road. I dropped back in to build a big windmill. I started the world's first green energy company, Ecotricity, um, in 95. And, uh, and it's bothered me greatly since then. And I've dedicated the last 25, 30 years to uh, pursuing solutions in the, in the big fields of life, energy, transport, and food, where 80% of everybody's personal carbon footprint occurs. Um, and energy uh, was the biggest cause of climate emissions in our country back in the early 90s. Today, it's the second biggest. But it's still uh, very important that we make the move to renewable energy as quickly as possible. You support their goals. Do you support their tactics? Uh, you know, maybe not everything that they do, but it doesn't matter to me. It's the same with the Labour Party. I support the Labour Party. I want them to win the next election very much. I think it's the most important thing for our country. This is the most important election in my lifetime. Um, but I don't have to agree with every Labour policy to feel that way. I mean, nobody gets to vote for a party that they feel perfectly aligned with, I believe. You know, it's a, it's a best fit type thing. But I think Labour are by far the best choice for our country. And I think Just Stop Oil, they're doing a fantastic job in raising this issue because, uh, you know, we're constantly talking about the climate crisis and the issue of not drilling for new oil and gas in UK media. And that's a really important thing. We shouldn't be doing it. It's a crazy thing to do in the teeth of a climate crisis. I saw you shrug a little bit when I asked you about tactics. Dale, which are the ones that perhaps you have an issue with? Oh, I, I, there's nothing in particular. I well, mean, um, slow, slow walking, closing down a bridge if someone's got to get across it to a hospital or a job appointment, or a job interview, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know this is the thing that the media make much of, you know, the theoreticals. What if somebody is in an ambulance stuck in traffic? What if this, what if that, you know? Well, but, for, Nick, for me, the, the bigger harm is in the background. Last year, we experienced incredibly hot temperatures across Europe. They were definitely driven indeed. by the climate crisis. 40,000 people lost their lives, Nick. And this kind of stuff is happening around the world. You know, we saw the massive flooding in Pakistan. Millions of people made homeless. They lost lives or homes and livelihoods. Um, and this is driven by the climate crisis, which is driven by fossil fuels. And to pull more out of the ground in the face of all that we know is, is so reckless, it's incredible. Even disrupting a sustainable garden at Chelsea Flower Show, Dale? <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, what are you going to do? <laughs> Well, hopefully you're going to condemn it, Dale. <laughs> Obviously I'm not. <laughs> the, first, the first thing these guys did, right, I gave them some money over a year ago, the first thing they did was uh, disrupt the Premier League football 
football game. I had no idea they were going to do that. And then next thing you know, I'm on talk sport talking about it <clears throat> and having to declare to the guys, actually, I funded that. Uh, I didn't know they were going to do it. But had I known, it wouldn't have made any difference. I mean, these guys are, are masters at uh, disruption. And, and I think it's very hard to have an effective protest without disruption. And, um, you know, it's, it's not a perfect world. Do you have much contact with them, Dale? No, I wouldn't say that I have. Um, we did speak last week. We'd been meaning to for a couple of weeks. And uh, and then we spoke just off the back of the big Daily Mail front page where they called me an eco-funding zealot or something. I don't know what it was. Mm. And I thought, do you know what? I'll, I'll flick the Vs to the Daily Mail here and I'll double down. I'll do some funding with Just Up Oil. So that's what I did. <laughs> if they need cash, do they just pick up the phone to you? <laughs> Sometimes it feels that way. Sometimes it feels like the whole world just picks up the phone to me when they need cash, Nick, because I, gi I give money to an awful lot of causes, not just the two that we're talking about here today. Indeed you do. You, you do put your money where your mouth is. Let's move away from Just Stop Oil. What, what level of conversations, regular conversations, do you have with Sakir, though, Dale? In my life, I've spoken to him, I think, twice on the phone. Once was um, the week before last, as I told the Today programme, um, and the other time would have been some months before that. Um, it's quite amusing because uh, I told six million people that I have spoken to him last week briefly, just to chat, and uh, the Sun came out with a headline the next day saying a secret meeting had been uh, discovered. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, you know, bless the Sun, that's how they roll. Um, why do you suppose your calls and your actions attract this level of attention from certain media, quarters of the media? That's a good question, Nick. I, I think last week was a very quiet news week because it's not the first time this, this issue has come up before. It wasn't brand new. I think also I'm prepared to uh, come on shows like yours uh, yeah. and other people's and just, just talk. And I talk from the heart. I tell the truth. Uh, I, you know, I don't hide from, from any questions or any issues. And um, maybe that's a rare thing. I, I don't really know. But uh, here you, we are. You made pretty plain your contempt for the current government. Just spell it out. What is it that you find, if I can use this word, and I wouldn't be able to put words in your mouth anyway, what is it you find so reprehensible about them? Well, um, <clears throat> we've had 13 years of Tory rule so far. Um, several unelected prime ministers. If you look at the record on the climate crisis, we signed up to the Paris Accord to keep global temperatures down to 1.5 degrees and all that kind of stuff. They say all the right things, but they do all the wrong things. Opening a new coal mine in Cumbria, uh, drilling for oil and gas in the North Sea, expanding runways and a 26 billion road building program while maintaining the ban on onshore wind, our cheapest, fastest, cleanest form of energy that's available to us. It needs no public money. Um, so that's on the climate. But look around the rest of our country. NHS is on its knees, record levels of poverty, the use of food banks, you know, the cost of living crisis, wherever you look. I think the Tories have spent the last 13 years more obsessed with fighting each other than they have been with fighting the problems this country is facing. Many trade unions have spoken out against Sakir's plans to end all new oil and gas drilling. There's a debate that that will, of course, cost jobs. What's more important, jobs or the environment, Dale? First, I want to say, what kind of world do we live in where the government and the unions agree with each other? That's not right, is it? That's not normal. Right. Then to your question, right, to your question, we create more jobs for every pound spent on renewable energy than we do on oil and gas. That's a matter of fact. And so it isn't a choice between jobs and the environment. That's a false choice. With the environment, we get jobs. There's an enormous economic... An additional £1,000 on people's tax bills. All right, you're a supremely successful bloke now. You haven't always been. You'll remember the times when £1,000 would have seemed unattainable to you, Dale Vince. What do you say to people now who could be faced with that hike in their, t in their tax bills each year? Yeah, you know, firstly, I, I doubt the report is accurate. Where did it come from, Nick? Uh, this comes from, hold set one second, this comes from Treasury Analysis. Aha, uh -huh. and that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. From the government, in effect. The, well, yeah. well yeah, I mean, they would say it's civil servants, but yes, it is the mm. Treasury that is working to this government, although the Conservative government would say, of course, they are the independent civil servants. But back to you, Dale. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fine. Well, look, uh, look what happens when um, this government froze tax allowances recently. You know, it's, it's made it's made millions of people worse off. Tax allowances have been frozen while cost of living has, has soared. People are thousands and thousands of pounds worse off than when this government came into power. Um, you know, uh, earnings are, are down. You know, <laughs> the lowest lowest level uh, lowest level of growth for like decades. So I think a thousand pounds sounds cheap compared to this Conservative government, actually, if it's true. All right, and the final question. 
Forest Green Rovers, remind my listeners, you are the chairman. You have the opportunity to sign the new, not the, but a Lionel Messi who will transform the fortunes of your club that cruelly had a rough season. But you can't get there on time because you're the wrong side of the bridge. You don't get there to sign this player. And Barnsley FC, who came in on a different train, do. How do you feel about Just Off All then, Dale Vince? It's a it's a nice theoretical. Here's here's another one for you. <laughs> like we we don't tackle the climate crisis, and and all football clubs become unable to play football due to extreme weather events. Uh, you know we we lose oh, half yeah. our games in a season to rain or, or snow. Well, what or, happened to Carlisle a couple of years ago? Do you remember Carlisle went completely mm. under the water a couple of years ago? So every ground in the land is effectively waterlogged. Yeah, there's, I mean these these events. I mean genuinely, Nick, this is happening. We have. Uh, we have drains under our pitch, which we're having to upgrade because they're not fit for the climate crisis that we're currently experiencing. They have been fit for decades and they're not anymore. Uh, we are inundated periodically by the big rain. Good luck next season. I hope you have a better one. Thanks for your time. Dale Vince, who, just to remind everyone, is chairman. Thanks, Dale. Is chairman of Forest Green Rovers. But in this conversation, really, is founder of Ecotricity, which allows him to put his money where his mouth is with both Just Stop Oil and the Labour Party. It's extended interview, 9.35. News headlines on LBC Lottie Morley. Prince Harry is preparing.